What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another video here on the Pool Focus podcast. I'm Quinn, and today's photographer is an amazing photographer out of Charleston, West Virginia, where she uh, shoots just about anything, and it's going to be a, an awesome opportunity because this is the first time meeting her, and uh, we're just going to chat. So without further ado, it's Caitlin Myers. It's nice to be here. I'm so happy to meet you and get, get to talking to you for the first time. Um, I think it's great that you're starting this podcast yeah. and like getting to meet more photographers and getting more of a community together. I think this is so great. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's, I think it's, um, I am trying to like figure out a good way of like just to help other small photographers just kind of like market themselves and making themselves available because there's so many talented artists out right. there and stuff. And um, it's just trying to, trying to get out there and find a client you know, clients and, and other creatives really. But, um, so yeah, so you are with, uh, your business is called Caitlin Nicole photography. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, how long have you been shooting and like, what kind of like inspired you to start? I started in 2020, like right around, like when COVID started right around that summer. Um, I really just like, I wasn't like working around the time. Like I had gotten laid off from my job because of the virus and everything. Mm -hmm. So I was wanting to do something like my fiance told me, he's like, well, how about you start your own business? You always wanted to be creative and do something for yourself. I was like, okay, well, let me like, I'll just looked in the different things I could do. And I was like, well, let me buy a camera. Cause I've always loved taking pictures. I like, I used to take pictures just like on my cell phone and stuff, yeah. of, like my <laughs> sisters and my friends and everything. So I was like, well, I'm going to go buy me like a little Canon Rebel, just like a little cheap camera. And I got that and I just started like taking some pictures of my friends for free and I started me up like a little like Facebook page and I started posting my pictures and people were like oh like can you do my senior pictures can yep. you do this for me and I was like yeah sure I mean I'll do it for free I was too scared to like charge yeah. anything because I yeah. wasn't very comfortable with my work yet so um I just started doing that and once I did a few like free sessions for people um I started charging just like fifty dollars like for a session yeah. just like trying to get myself up there and I just really fell in love with it like I've always been more of like an introverted person and this really helped me like get out there and like meet new people and mm -hmm. put myself out there and I, I really like love it a lot building new connections with people and it's probably one of my favorite things I've ever done I love it so yeah, much yeah. yeah and I get to do it for my business so yeah yeah, it's, it's funny that you said, like, you don't know what, in the beginning, you, you don't know what, how much to charge someone. And right. And you feel like if you charge them too much, and I think that's a very important um, point that I think a lot of photographers need to know, uh, is just, like, you know, know your worth when you come right in. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have that experience, if you haven't had the, you know, education of, like, when I say education, more like just, like, the knowledge of your camera and, like, editing right. and stuff like that. You know, it is probably good to start small, but it's like some of these photographers out here is, I mean, amazing at Photoshop, amazing at Lightroom, and they're still charging like nothing. And I'm just right. like, know your worth, you yes. know, and um, it's amazing to see like uh, that type of growth because that was, that's not a very long time since covid then you started and like i feel like your work is like amazing yeah, i love the you way so, you edit thank you, so much. Like, thank you yeah like you the way you edit is just like yeah it's like i love golden tones and me too like, that's my favorite it's just it's probably like the redhead you yeah know, like we're <laughs> yeah. both like redheads yeah. so like we're just like yeah let us we need something to let us look good it's like we, we know <laughs> right. golden's gonna work right. but um um yeah, I, I just love it. Uh, I know we was going to, like, try to meet up um, last time it snowed, which doesn't right. happen a lot in Charleston, I feel like. But We had a lot of, like, good snow this year, I feel. I mean, yeah. not a very lot of days, but when it did snow, it was, yeah. like, a good snow. Yeah, and we was trying to meet up and we was trying to do some headshots and stuff, but uh, it's just, like, West Virginia weather. It's just, it never, it never works in your favor, I feel like, as a <laughs> no, photographer, yeah. so... Um, but I'm really glad you can just like hop on here and just like talk and stuff. Um, because it's just, it kind of goes to the fact that, you know, especially what you, you mentioned earlier is you don't have to like, be, you know, pretty much been in the business for a long time to like, you know, find your, your, your editing style and everything like that. Like you've kind of like went with it and, and ran with it. So like, um, what camera do you shoot now? Because I'm not assuming you still shoot with, like, the Rebel. No, I don't shoot with yeah, the Rebel so. anymore, no. Um, 
actually I want to like mention this because she like helped me out so much and like figuring out like my gear and like mm -hmm. my camera and stuff when I first started like it's probably just like a few months into me starting like actually like charging for pictures and stuff and I, f I really don't even know how to pronounce her first name it's um Liza Lisa Whittington yeah 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 Liza yeah okay. I, I have no idea but I know exactly what you're talking <laughs> yes. about uh yeah, yeah yeah she actually had messaged me and wanted to book pictures with me and we ended up just chatting a little bit and like talking and we agreed that we could go and just like swap some pictures of each other yeah. and just meet up yeah. and so we did that and she talked to me like we were out there for I feel like almost two hours just like talking she was like fi help me figure out my camera I was just shooting on like auto I yeah. was not shooting manual or nothing like yeah. that I really did not know anything about my gear or my camera and I was just kind of learning as I went yeah. and she showed me so much and like from that point that's when I like sold my Canon Rebel and got me like a full frame DSLR and yeah. I, I shoot now with a um Canon 6D Mark II. Yeah, I love that camera so much. I've, I'm want to upgrade here soon to a mirrorless. Yeah. I've been looking into it, but and I always like I always keep my Sigma 35 yeah. on my camera. It hardly ever comes off. So yeah, dude, that that Mark II is just like it's it's amazing. It's a workhorse of a camera too. Mm -hmm. Like the I love versatility it. of it, you can whether you're just doing like a regular portrait or if you're doing like you know bigger events like weddings and everything, like it fits perfectly yes. into that. Um, Canon is so so rich in collar too. That's my favorite. Yeah. Like the Canon and Sony's is like the collar yeah. of like it's so rich. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I I've shot with the big three, and I, I mentioned this on a couple of episodes before. Is uh, uh, Nikon, Canon, and, and Sony, and I um I started off with a Nikon D thirty two hundred. It's pretty much like the equivalent to that Canon Rebel, and I got to a point where I like I felt like I learned as much as I could, and I was pulling out as much as I could. And then I went to uh, Canon Mark II, um, and w the difference between those two, I automatically felt, I didn't even understand the difference between lenses, like a kit lens, and, right. you know, and, and I was just like, what the heck is going on? I didn't understand any of that, and w then you start, you hop on YouTube, and you figure out, all oh, snap, like, and the camera that I bought, I bought it off of a guy in college, and he was just upgrade. I didn't even realize I had, like, a $4,000 camera in my hand, and I bought it for, like, 600 Oh, wow, yeah. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, this is really good and stuff. And then it didn't take SD cards. It took the CF card readers yeah. and stuff, and that was something different. It didn't do video at all, just did photos. And um, I was like, yeah, this is a huge upgrade. And then that camera is still an amazing camera, and... I went to shoot with that, and then I was like, well, I want to get more into video. And I was like, I know I'm going to be shooting weddings. I know I'm going to be shooting, like, low light. You know, I don't have the lighting set up for it. Like, what is the best option? And then Sony's just kept on coming up. And that's one thing about Sony's I love in the low light. They're they're really great at uh, getting a very sharp image. Um, and they are – I feel like they're user-friendly, but I guess it just depends on, like – what you start with and stuff but like canon definitely produces the best collar in my opinion and then sony does the best lighting but nikon the only thing i would shoot nikon with would be, would be like sports and i had I'd like i just it, it feels more comfortable with like the shutter but like right there's nothing they all have their pros and cons you know and um i told uh i told my wife i was like listen if i if we ever win the the lottery like i'm gonna get like a full line of icons full line of canon <laughs> like I'm, i want to have options with it you know i'm right. not gonna be like just like one thing and like oh i'm gonna go shoot a wedding which yeah. can i pick yeah like today? which one should i you yeah. know it's just like an accessory at that point right. and stuff and but um it's it's insane that and like i i i'm in gaming as well so like i built my pc where i wanted it to be good for like photography and gaming right. and my wife was like you literally pick the most expensive hobbies there were and i was like well i was like i i guess but it is it, it gets it too expensive like just just lenses themselves right. you, know, you mentioned yes. the 35 like 
I've been looking at the 35 on the Sony, and I want it really bad, but it's just like you're looking at 1800 just right, like yeah. one lens right there. Right. Um, That's why I went for the Sigma because I, yeah. I had great reviews on it, and it was a little bit more cheaper than like the Canon 35. Yeah. So, But I love the Sigma. I can't say nothing. And you about don't need it. like an adapter or anything mm -mm. on it. You just nope. pop it on, mm -hmm. and it's just good. Yep. Because I've been looking at it, but now, see, this is why I love about this because now you get like a first hand review, be like, yep. I've been using it. I've been day, using yeah. it for two years now. It hardly wow. ever comes off my camera. Yeah. I mean, I use a seventy to two hundred yeah. um, when I shoot weddings. But other than that, I always use my thirty-five. It never comes off my camera. Yeah, I have an eighty-five one point four, and the nifty fifty is what. It, that's the two that I kind of like just shoot. But like, I'm wanting to switch the fifty with the thirty-five because yeah. I'm just like. I just need that a little bit wider, but still a sharpness in it. Right. And, oh, it's just, I, I rented them. Um, I, a couple of years ago, I would rent a lot of my equipment because I would have a second shooter, but she didn't have a camera, but she had a really good eye. And she mm -hmm. was just like, she just didn't want to, like, I don't blame her, like, pay, like, you know, 2000 for, like, a camera and lens right. just to make 300 bucks. You know, it just didn't. It yeah. was, And I was like, no, I definitely get it. So I would rent it uh, from a place called Lens Rental, and they're out of uh, Nashville, ten Tennessee. Amazing company, by the way. Um, if you ever need like equipment or need to test something, like that's I definitely recommend them. You can get like seven day rental for like fifty bucks. And they just ship it. Mm -hmm. They that's ship awesome. it. You get like a box. You get like a return label and right. everything, and then you can use it. And then if you're ever late, you just call them up and be like, "Hey, it's gonna be a couple of days late," and they won't charge you and stuff. They got some really great customer service. I definitely feel you're gonna yeah. look into that. When Not I sponsored, get by the way, but <laughs> I'm just I saying, <laughs> like, very. They're they've. I, when I first started out, I mean, I didn't even have the 85 yet. I had just a 50 and um i would rent the 85 and i'll rent an extra camera as well and i probably did like 20 weddings where i used them and it was like um at one point the guy that i was emailing he was like gonna get you one next week and i was like yeah and he was like i'm just gonna give you a discount on this because there's just no need and by the end of it i was paying like 40 bucks for like two weeks of equipment i mean yeah. insane insane right um and then that's where i was using it i was like i'm just gonna buy it because it I mean, I probably didn't need to, like, test it out 20 times to, to <laughs> right. see, but I want to make sure I got it. But I've used I used it all last year for weddings. It's an amazing lens. Um, I haven't shot – I usually don't shoot with a 70 to 200. Um, I want it as a just a big lens to, to have for those right. hard ones. But, I mean, does yours – was it go down to like a 1.8? Mine's or? only, I think it's only a 2.8. 2.8, yeah. yeah. I don't even know if they make it. Down. I, I haven't I haven't seen it at 1.8. Yeah. I haven't seen it anyway. I know they yeah, make it crazy. a little bit smaller than maybe the 2.8, but yeah. that's, the, that's the only thing that I've seen. 2.8 for a 7200 still. Right. Like, I mean, you get, you Beautiful, know, like it looks almost like yeah. a backdrop too. Yeah. And great lighting comes in as well. Like I have no problems with the lighting. I mean, I usually don't use that lens if I'm like, in like a dark reception right. or something like yeah. that, just because it it is a two point eight, I'm not gonna get as much light as I would with something else. But yeah, do you use uh, when you're doing like receptions and stuff? Do you use like a flash? Uh, it just depends or? if um, if the DJ. It depends on what lighting the DJ usually yeah. brings because sometimes my flash like interferes with their lighting. And I yeah. don't feel like I like it as much as I would to just like messing with my kelvin and my white balance and trying to make it right where i can edit it nicely i right. just did a wedding where it was really dark in the reception but the dj had great lighting i didn't use a flash at all and the reception photos turned out great i loved them so it just usually depends on how the lighting is in it already. yeah it's interesting how that whole 2000 early 2000 vibes coming back like mm -hmm. people are like wanting that flash like right i do love the flash so, photography yeah. like the direct flash photography i really yeah. do like it i'm not really i haven't done it a whole lot so like i don't usually i haven't really like dip my foot in it too yeah, much I but have, i do yeah. love the look of it a lot yeah i have no idea when it comes to it and i think that's the reason why i'm just like uh i use a loom cube and yeah. um i snap that on there and what i do is it just illuminates the whole dance floor and everything people can vibe i've gotten some really good shots last year with it and it kind of changed the game and um they do you know like the sony's do good, great in low light anyway so you're you don't have to really like overcompensate with iso when you have like this giant box of light just like beaming on right. the dance floor but 
I, it's interesting you said about the DJ because there's some DJs that I've came, like worked with and they do really w- well, but they don't bring their lights. And then mm-hmm. some of them seems like they're all lights and no DJ. And <laughs> yes, I agree. It, you know, and <laughs> so, but for the most part, I've worked with some really good ones. Um, there, there's a really cool vibe you can get with like some of the lasers and things like that. But mm-hmm. um, you know, you got to be like when you're shooting video, you got to be like mindful because you know when that shutter's open, it could like potentially harm your sensor right, and stuff. Right. And like, like this, like you know, people was. I, after the eclipse happened last week, it gave me like anxiety because some people was doing it correctly, and then some people was just <laughs> pointing it up in yeah. the sky and shooting. I was like, please, Don't please, do that. Yeah, be careful with it. Um, there's yeah, a, I wasn't even going to attempt yeah, to try to mess yeah. up my camera. So yeah, my uh, my mom asked me about it, and I said, nah, I'm not gonna like. I want to get. Like, I want to start traveling more, and I want to do, like, some really awesome, like, shots and go to places and get some really cool portraits. Like, some of my bucket list portraits is, like, I want to do a portrait in, like, um, Utah, Colorado, and, and those Aspens in the fall yes. when it turns yellow. That would you know? be so beautiful, yes. Like, I I have, like, it's, it's like a bucket list portrait. I just want to shoot somebody, like, with that type of backdrop. And right. so I want to do those more traveling type of um, shots and... I told her, I was like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get my equipment, like, when I, like, there's going to be, like, a whole separate, like, bag that's just for that type of cool stuff, you know? Right. I don't want to, like, just take my camera out and just point it up in the sky for, like, the <laughs> Definitely. eclipse. And, um, but there was a lot of people I saw in my timeline that was doing it, and dude, some of them, I don't know if you saw some of the things, like, I follow a lot of national geographic like photographers mm-hmm. I, re- I don't follow and, a whole lot of that yeah, stuff. I yeah. didn't see it's a whole, whole different lot. vibe and so it was like um but do they they was killing it you could see like these sun flares coming off and, i did actually see yeah. one picture of like the um i think it was maybe one of the national geographic yeah. photographers now that i'm thinking back on it, it was like a really detailed shot of like the sun flares coming from out behind yeah. it was really yeah. cool there's a lot of people that and what i was uh, excited about a lot of like my people I follow online but it's like photography that I've known for a while um there's a couple guys from Chicago that that got it and I was just like I know that they're like small in their own right so but they had like one image I was had like 10,000 likes on Twitter and I was like yes yeah, like one awesome. of my like homies are getting like right. recognition that they deserve and stuff and it's like always good to see like that but um I know um I love shooting like I like shooting the moon though more than an eclipse like the I don't care about like I mean, I, I do care because, like, I'm kind of a nerd in that sense. Yeah. But I want to, I would think it'd be, like, cooler to do, like, trying to shoot, like, a comment or, like, something. Right. In the I'll, Milky I'll Way have, and, like, just, like, not, like, trying to, like, actually doing it. But I, like, when I have shot things like yeah. that, I usually take pictures of the moon. Like, I love yeah. pictures of the moon. Like, that's one of my favorite things. I have, like, I took this one shot before of the moon and I had it up as, like, my cover photo and, like, my, pr- yeah, my yeah. personal page yeah. for so long. And just, like, it was, like, it just came, like, sunset. And the sky was, like, really blue hue. Yeah. And the sun, and the, not the sun, the moon yeah. was so bright. And it was so pretty. I love that. Yeah. Um, one of my uh, early days, whenever I was just, like, learning how to shoot, I didn't understand when I was shooting the moon that it wasn't, like, crystal clear and it was just always blurry and and so i got on youtube i try to figure it out and stuff and uh one guy he gave a perspective to me that i just like it just immediately like snapped in my head and i was like oh my gosh like that's it so he was pretty much saying he's like don't look at that you need a whole bunch of light all the lights there because the moon itself is the largest reflector in the world and when you think about it like that you're like oh well all that sun's the light is there. Right. You just have to pinpoint it. And so then you take everything, you increase your shutter, and then bring the ISO all the way down, almost to, like, non-existent. Right. And then you take it, and then it was, like, crystal clear, and then you saw the craters. And I'm, like, I was, like, when I first got it, I'm, I remember, like, I was on the front porch. I was living in Philippi at the time, and I was on the front porch, huge full moon, and um, I was trying to figure it out, and I had – the camera like kind of propped up almost like you was like shooting it or something like Mm -hmm. with a gun or something you know (laughs) like and it was like there and I got it and I just was like I just hollered and and my wife was like are you okay what's going on (laughs) she comes out and I was like no this is like I got it I got it and then so for me like when you get like one of those like moments and it clicks you're just like 
that's the point of like progress and growth yes. that you get and you're just like i know what to do to fix something it's one of the best feelings oh too, it's amazing yes. it's amazing and that's the whole process of it it's like but if you just take it and then you just like shoot it and shoot it and and not figure out like and problem solve with it like you're never going to grow and right. now i can take it um it was literally this last fall i was just a uh, huge full moon it was like the harvest moon or, or one of the I don't know if you're into astrology, but it's like one of those probably harvest yeah. blood yeah. wolf moon. I don't know what's going <laughs> yeah. on, but um, it was huge full moon and I was driving home and I was like, I got to shoot this and stuff. So I pulled over, grabbed my camera, boom, boom, clicked it, got it. I was out. But like, you know, years ago that would have right. taken like get a tripod out, you know, like 20 minutes trying to figure out your settings and stuff like that. And I literally got in and I was like, that really didn't hit as hard. You know, and I was just like, I don't think I need to shoot it anymore. And so if I want to do something different, and then that's when I was like, yeah, like it's, I've, I've learned that, that, that thing. But I always tell all beginning photographers, and it's like, that's a really great lesson. It's like, when you can shoot the moon crystal clear, then, then you are getting a good knowledge of like your ISO and, and right. everything like that. And, um, how to work your settings on. Yeah. The camera, yeah. Like and just like manual. really understanding the process of like the opposite of like, you don't need to. Because a lot of people would crank that ISO, make it super grainy, mm -hmm. and then... That's the worst thing you can do yeah. is crank your ISO up, so... Yeah, so you're just like... Because they're looking at it, and they see it like a, you know, an immediate result of of it being... Um, of it being pretty much happening right in front of them, and be like, oh, yeah, well, that's brightening up, then that's got to be right, and it's, right. it's not the case. I remember the first time that I actually, like, shot a manual... Um, <laughs> that's the best isn't it like, <laughs> he's just like <laughs> I actually like I did it for my fiance's brother like his graduation shoot and I told him I was like I did some just like an auto too just so I wouldn't know how to yeah. edit it at the time but I was like I'm gonna do some of these in manual I've never shot it before and I was shooting I was like oh this is great I think it looks awesome and I go and I went to load them up into my Lightroom and lo and behold it was noisy as could be i couldn't even fix it i was so embarrassed i was like i yeah. have to learn how to do this yeah i and remember I just, the i was gonna say like i remember the first time i used the 50 and i looked at it and so it was a 51.8 so not the 1.4 but it was still like from a kit lens it was a lot better you know right. i think that was my first lens that i've gotten after my kit lens like yeah. i went up to the 51.8 so yeah and i took a photo and it was it was a it was a senior photo and it was during the fall and I took it and I said well that is interesting like it kind of like I was like have I been missing out on this the whole time and it's just like <laughs> you see it and you're just like oh, what can el what else can I do and you right. look at it on the back of the camera and you realize it looks so different than what you've been doing yeah. and then you're just like oh it's just like you know when I get new gear when you get like anything new now I look at it I'm just like I got a new toy to like discover and play mm -hmm. with and stuff um that's like you know the Osmo that this is being shot on and stuff like I got this a couple weeks ago and I'm still learning new stuff on it and I, I hooked it to the car and um the last couple of days and I'm I got a suction cup on there and yeah. I'm just like <laughs> I want to do it and my wife's out there and um I was just driving around the parking lot last night and I was like I gotta get this test shot I want to make sure it looks good and stuff but like she just looks at it and she's like, you literally got this thing suction cupped. And, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's going, anything for the shot, it's going to look awesome. So it's just, uh, and then when I went home and I put it on the, and I was like, that's going to be amazing. There was a shot that, um, like in the reflection, there's like the tree. So like when I was turning, it was just like that whole, like really cool transition storyboard. I was like, yes, that's I was perfect. like, yeah. I was like, this is going to be good. I can do so much stuff with this. Um, so so you do you do weddings you mm -hmm. do um, seniors portraits engagements mm -hmm. is there anything that you look at and you're just like ah, I'm not interested in that or you just kind of like take it on as a challenge I usually I have a lot like usually just took it on as a challenge with about everything that anybody has like messaged me with other mm -hmm. than like like we had talked about like pose newborn like I don't usually try to get into yeah. that I don't know what I'm doing and that's something like very like serious you have to like actually like learn and like experience how to do that and I'm just not comfortable with that so I always send all those clients to someone else but I've always um kind of experimented into everything yeah. I try to want to like 
more like this is one of my goals this year is to try to keep it more i'm just wanting to do like weddings engagements yeah. couples um i really do love doing families because i just love getting to like grow a relationship with my clients and like yeah. see like them like i'll do like maternity photos then do like a lifestyle like newborn photo shoot in their house for them and then i'll do like one year pictures and i just love growing that relationship with that family and seeing like the kids grow up and like it's so this, cool i know yeah. i just love that but yeah. that's something also that i've like wanted to like kind of like not do so much anymore but i still love doing yeah. it so much as well but i also like i just get so much more emotion in my pictures when i work with couples and stuff that's one of yeah. my favorite things ever i feel like i can get so much more artistic and more creative when i work with couples yeah, I like just to work with adults, to yeah. be honest. Like, and so, like, my page is, I like to, I, I, don't, I feel like it's tasteful, but also I want a little bit of spice. And I tell all my clients and stuff, when, especially if I'm shooting, like, engagement, I was like, how, how much spice are we talking about? Like, are you guys comfortable with, like, a little bit of Old Bay and that's just it? Or are we going, like, you know, crazy? And most of the time that's all they want to do. And I'm just like, perfect, because I don't want to, like, I'm not comfortable with doing, like, some crazy elaborate, but I also want to put just a little bit of spice into those photos. That way, like, people be like, that's different, you know? Right. Like, that's a I little bit different. And around here, people, a little spice goes a long yeah. ways in <laughs> yeah. West Virginia. So, yes, definitely. Um, like, I know for engagement, like, one of my favorite poses is just having the guy on on the ground and then the girl on top. Yes. And then just have her arch her back a little bit and then forehead, forehead. And I'm just like, you get it. It's amazing and stuff. And See? then um, one, of my, one of my favorite shots I ever shot was at Cooper's Rock during it. And the guy was like... There was a lot of people around, a lot of people. I was like, listen. Now, the girl shot with me a couple times before, so she was like, no, no, you, like, we trust you. Like, whatever you want to do, like, we know you're going to get it. And I was like, okay, there's a lot of people, and this is what I want to do. Are you guys comfortable? And the guy was like, well, they keep on looking. We got to start charging. And I was like, no, 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 man. So, uh, but I had to edit all those people out. But when you look at the photo, you see it. And there's no one around, and they're on this cliff, and it's sunset, and it's golden, and it's like this tennis, like Tennessee, like orange, like whiskey, like, and I just got it, and I was like, oh, this is like, I, it's this on shot, my, yeah, yeah, it's on my website. I use it for a lot of stuff. I mean, they look so good, and um, I use it. I, I use it all the time. I love that shot. I love, um, I love negative space as well. Probably a little bit too much. I've actually been roasted on YouTube about it because <laughs> apparently there's just like, you get some of those comments and you look at their profiles and you realize that they've been shooting, but they've all, they, their 30 years of experience is from 1960 to 1990. You know? And <laughs> yeah. it's like, okay, well times have changed grandpa. Like, you know, like we, we can, we, you know, people can just change. Like, right. I just love Nega space. Like if you have like a couple down at the bottom, that's like out of focus, but you see like the whole entire scenery behind them for me, the interpretation is the fact that this little moment in time, they're connected into a larger world, and that's how special it is. Yes, I always love, yeah. like, taking shots yeah. like that because it's, like, I feel something more when I look at that picture other than if it was just focused on, like, yeah. close into them. Yeah. I, like, I feel like I can look at that picture and, like, feel more emotion in that moment than, yeah. like, another shot. Yeah, and that's with, like... You know, if I shoot seniors in high school, um, it, it's because I know that the the mom or dad, like I've just known who they are. Like honestly, in a couple of weeks, I'm shooting a senior, but it's like from my hometown. Um, I've seen this kid since he was like two years old. Right. So I try not to do it and just like if I have somebody random out, I'm just like, mm, I'll try to send them off to somebody else. I just don't want to mix and mingle that, right. and um, I want to like niche down into a point where. Um, engagement is cool. I like weddings. Um, for weddings, I'm starting to like, I love, I'm starting to like details, like more than the actual people yeah, <laughs> in some I've, ways, but like the detail shots is starting to become like my favorite. It's some of my favorite to shoot too. I love getting all yeah. the details. I've honestly, I've like talked to like a few of like my clients and stuff, a few of my wedding clients, cause I want to kind of get into like more of a, like 
documentary type of style when i shoot weddings that's and kind of just yeah. kind of like stand back and not pose anything and just really yeah. like watch and pay attention and capture that raw emotion and like those really special moments that you're never going to yeah. get back during the wedding like those things i feel like are so much more important during your day than like a pose photo and that's something i really want to get into it's hard to explain that mentality to the client. Yeah, I think definitely. that's the biggest hurdle about that because I know exactly what you're, you're talking mm -hmm. about. I love to shoot candid. I hate, I don't know, I'm not, I understand why some, some of them get it. Like at um, usually how it's like the wedding is shot and then right after ceremony, they'll do like the family. They just want some of the family photos with it and stuff. Right. But I'm just like, I don't want to do that. I, would, <laughs> I want it like, I agree. I, I usually have them, I'll look at me, then I'm like, okay, find someone to look at because mm -hmm. I want that candid photo. Right, I always do that shot. Okay, yeah. I'll get that one, like, hey, look at me and smile, and then, yeah. like, look at each other, say something to make each other laugh, like, make each yeah. other laugh, you know, giggle a little bit. Like, I always try to get that candid photo because I honestly just, like, I'm not a huge fan of just looking at the camera and smiling. Yeah. Now, some people, that they, they dig it, but I'm just like, if you booked me, you would think I feel like the – as a consumer, you did your due diligence to like, okay, this is how they shoot. This is the ones they post. Like, right. this is what we're going to get out right, of it. Exactly. And stuff. But you'd be really surprised <laughs> and stuff with it. But um, for the most part, um, I like them because um, I've shot in some really cool locations. I haven't had any, um, well, I won't say that. I've had some questionable locations, but you still make it work. Right. I had one last year. It rained on us. It was an outside wedding. Um, but it rained on us the whole entire day and I was just doing a video for him, but the, it was, everything was like sopping wet and mm -hmm. I'm just like, I can't, you can't control the weather. Right. You, know? you, and, you just have to kind of yeah. work with it and make it yeah. what it is. Yeah. They was super nice. Uh, it was on like a weird property. It was weird for me, but it wasn't weird for them. Apparently it had some type of bigger, um, uh, bigger meaning to them which is it is what it is but it's it, if it didn't rain it would have looked like it would have looked great it yeah. really would have but everything was sopping wet and i was just like so i'm just trying to get like my b-roll and stuff and you got napkins that's just like <laughs> wet over here and you're just like <laughs> so you kind of like you have to like flip the whole entire vibe to it and then right. make it more of into a they're having fun and they they ended up doing it like her dress at the end was it was it was ruined. I'm sure it, it was. was. And just, like days like that, it usually and happens. By the time afterwards, she was just like in a good vibe. She was like, "I know it's ruined, but it's like I'm not gonna let that ruin." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the way like yeah, yeah. the vibe should be going yeah. with it, you know." And the way I feel like your photographer like goes about things with you, it helps yeah. them with their like mentality on oh. things a lot. Because when I shoot weddings, I'm like. I'm coordinating so much oh, stuff and like every, helping every the bride and the groom through yeah. the whole day. Like I'm not just a photographer. I'm doing so much yeah. more and I do not mind. I love doing it, but it yeah. is so much more than just taking pictures and just getting that. You have to do uh, so much more with weddings. Yeah. It was funny. I saw a TikTok from, I don't know if you guys follow Lunar Media. They're out in Morgan. Well, Morgantown, maybe Pittsburgh area and stuff, but they're, um, they are, two guys that, that owns this like media company and they shoot weddings as well and they posted a tiktok and it was hilarious because as a guy i totally related to like this it had a guy and he was like sitting down at the bottom and he was, it had like a real sad song and the, but the caption was like i'm wondering if all the bridesmaids forgot about the guy photographer outside <laughs> waiting to make sure you get the shots and i'm just like that happens like right. because you know, there's situations that, you know, you have to be out. Now, with my second shooter, she can just go right in there with the, right. with the girls. And that, that helps me out a lot because then it's like she knows what she's looking at and they don't feel awkward. And I'm just not sitting there in the corner with strangers, you know. Right. And I can go with the guys and stuff. So, um, and that's the vibe, too. It's like if you have a good venue that has space and, and has – people that are like okay like this is how this is what we're going to do i've had some couples has been very helpful about that and they're just like listen whatever he says you do it i'm like appreciate right. that you know <laughs> yes. because it is hard for us i know whenever i first started shooting i was sitting in my car for like 20 minutes before i go in because yeah. i had so much anxiety because i'm just like i don't know these people blah blah, blah. and now it's completely flipped mm -hmm. i go 
you know, open the door, guns blaze, and be like, what's up, everyone? Yeah. I'm the photographer. We're going to have a great day today. Because yes. if you start that off right then and there, like, they're just going to be, that vibe's going to continue. Right. Um, you're going to joke with the bridesmaids. You're going to joke with the groomsmen. Um, and then by the time reception happens, they're so comfortable with you in that area. Is mm-hmm. like the vibes are just there Perfect, and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I've had multiple weddings where I'm sitting there and I'll book like a bridesmaid or a, you know, groomsman. They're like, you know, and I've had that happen a lot too. Like I've had a lot of things like come from weddings. Like I've done like senior portraits from weddings, family photos from weddings, more weddings from weddings, you know, it's amazing. It's uh, there's a lot of people out there that I think with our society now too, we look at it and we just want to, check the box and be like yeah i got a photographer i got a videographer right and then they don't want to like shop they just know nope you're doing a great job i see it yes i want you you're done and that's so, honestly you know. like the best compliment i feel yeah. to get because they yeah. just come up to me and they're like you know i've loved how you work today you yeah. have done a great job you know i want you to shoot my wedding like yeah. give me your card i'm yeah. like perfect here take yeah. my card and they just don't know, like, 20 minutes before, I ate, like, 20 granola bars in my car, <laughs> chugged a Red Bull, like, freaking out, having anxiety. Be like, oh, thank you. I'm really a professional. I, you know? <laughs> like, so it's just, um, it, it's amazing. Like, I've, I had a girl, they, she told me about that one time. She was like, yeah, your attention to detail is amazing. And only thing I could think of was, like, I moved two chairs. And I was like, <laughs> well, I was like, I guess. <laughs> and so I thought about that on the whole way home. I was like, yeah what was she talking about? And I was like, and cause I, you know, I try to like look at that and I, I want to get better with my storytelling and all that. And you try to like, um, dissect everything. And after a shoot, you want to learn. And you, I never want to become like a cookie cutter photographer. Right. I want to like something new every single time. And that's mm-hmm. like, I shouted her out multiple times is on these podcasts is Stacy, sincerely Stacy. I love her work. Yes. Love she's Stacey. not cookie cutter. Right. You know? She's always doing something yeah. creative and different. Yeah. Like I absolutely love Stacy. Yeah. She's one of my top favorite photographers yeah. in the area. We shout, we shout her out and she sent me a big old message and it's amazing because you don't realize what these other creatives are going through. Right. Everybody and, like has a little bit of a hard time with their work and yeah. their self. And yeah. it's always good to like, just give that little boost to someone, yeah. especially like when you see their work, say something like, if you like it, say something to them. They yeah. really need that. Like, yeah. And that that's the part of like, I, the older I've gotten to, the the more you have to realize that, you know, I didn't take advantage of in college whenever I first started photography that, I had time and I had like people around me that would, would have been like models. I would have had like resources pretty much. I didn't take advantage of that. I just kind of like didn't know what I was doing. And now I'm like, when I was working, um, you're looking at that and be like, well, I can only shoot on the weekends. I can only do this. And then this limits you. And then you go like four months sometimes without like shooting a portrait. Right. Because the winter time or something, you're just like, you're stuck in this loop. And, so like the whole anxiety, all of this going on at the same time and just get that validation from a, another creative, be like, mm-hmm. no, your work is amazing. Right. Oh, it can, it can go a long way. I've had it where people, um, people sometimes just come out of the woodwork sometimes and just tell you and you're just like, I didn't even know that you followed me. I didn't right. even know that you recognized any of my work at all. And I mean, clients is one thing but when you get that compliment from another photographer i feel like it's just like chef's kiss yes it really is it's Uh, definitely from a photographer that like you love their work as well and you're like oh my gosh like i can't believe that you think my work looks good you know like that's such a great compliment and when you get those compliments too i feel like it really helps inspire you to like be better and do more too so i like to challenge people Mm -hmm. um the last couple years i've been put in situations where the older I've gotten, I want to surround myself with more like-minded career and like driven individuals, Mm -hmm. people that are, if you put in the work, I'll, I'll respect the hell out of you, you know, but it's like, if you are just trying to get by and you're just trying to be like lazy and just trying to do like certain things at certain times, I'm just like, no, like I don't got time for that Mm -hmm. and stuff like, but if I see you out there grinding and then you take something like that and then you, the next time I see you, you flip and you're just like, holy crap, that's amazing. Like, I'm just like, yes, like I'm going to, I'm going to fight for you for no matter what, you know? And it's just like, 
that mentality is just not it's just it used to be there it used to be there and um the hard work and but i feel like it's very um it's easy for somebody could that could go like viral or somebody that could just get a photo that they didn't work that much on and people right. just hypes it up and then it's just like then they think that mentality is always going to be given to them right but it's just like okay well then you fall into that cookie cutter and then it's just like oh yeah well if you have like if you went viral and then you have built like this whole platform and then you have these people that just like constantly constantly you know supports you but they don't it's just like what's they're not valuable right like, there's it's not really a valuable um yeah clientele and yeah you could say yeah it really isn't like you're not gonna yeah. get very much from that yeah and that's the thing is like you know just like the older i got you know god i just want to surround myself with that and then that's the reason why i wanted to start this whole project because it's like i want to find out you know like you know whether you're on the podcast or not just kind of like you know finding other creatives out there that has the same drive as you is just yeah. like amazing connection because yes. they get it they understand that you know I've, I've said this multiple times too on the podcast is that you know as a vendor you know for a wedding like we're one of the only vendors that works before during and after yes you definitely. Know? and i feel like it's hard for like some clients as well to like understand like yes. where what time like and all that you do work for like things like yeah. that because yeah. it isn't just going out there and shooting for 30 minutes to an hour for a session yeah. like there is so much time beforehand like getting things ready for that session communicating with your client then coming home and going through all the pictures and picking out the best ones yeah. and then that's a whole different other thing that takes me at least forever then you have to edit the pictures yeah. and then get them into a gallery and and there's so much different subscriptions you have to have for your editing software and for your website and your galleries. And there's so much that goes into it. Then it's not just going out there and shooting some pictures and going and send them out to you. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, like recently, has, has there been any like big lessons that you've learned and you're just like, you know, I really wish I would have done that at the very beginning? Um, I really think it's just being more like, I feel like recently I've gotten like more into like detail with a lot of things. Okay. Like I never really paid attention too much into detail when I first started like photography too much yeah. because I was so focused on just getting that perfect, like good shot that they can like hang up on their wall in their home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's so much more to photography than yeah. that, you know? And the B-roll shots. Yeah. You know, and like the, yeah. just like I, I never really did that for so long and I, I feel like I, sh I wish I would have started that from the beginning and gotten more into that but the detail shots and those like you we were talking about earlier those candid shots are the most important shots in like my galleries that I send out in my opinion and yeah. that's something I wish I would have focused more on in the beginning yeah yeah I completely agree with you that's a good point yeah I think um and then a lot of people too is just um the way they shoot or like, I'm very trigger happy, too. So yeah. like, I, I'm very like that, too. Like, I just end up holding my shutter down a lot. And I, yeah. gotta, I have, I'm trying to be more conscious of that and, like, try to be just, like, actually, like, focus on getting that, like, your settings right and that good shot instead of just holding yeah. down my shutter a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, there's just a point that, you you know, you come home from a full day wedding and you got, like, 5,000 photos to look through. And you're just, like yeah well, this is gonna be fun and then <laughs> so when you're you know other clients they're looking at it well if you got like back-to-back -back weddings like you're doing that all the time so that's a huge goal this year i'm trying to like limit everything like i don't want to shoot more than 1500 like i'm putting that internally and that's yeah. still a lot of photos it is yeah but for me that's like like a third of what i shoot usually day, that's how i am you know? too like like you said like sometimes i'll come home from weddings and i've shot five thousand yeah. photos and that's yeah. like it takes me so long to go yeah. through and pick out like pictures out of it but like like i said like i have been like trying to be more conscious of that and like try to like not be so trigger happy yeah. like you said and like the last wedding i did i only i think i only shot two thousand and that was so much better for me yeah. than my usual like five thousand yeah. Yeah, and so, like my second shooter, she won't. Even, she, most times she won't even break like eight hundred. And I'm just like, which is still a lot. But like, she she's she's amazing. Um, her name's Hannah Rogers. She does uh, HMR images. Mm -hmm. um, she's told me multiple times like she doesn't want to be a primary photographer at weddings. She just wants a second shoot. Yeah. So she's like perfect because she's like, yeah, you tell me what to do. I'm there. I just don't want to be like 
I was like the voice of it and stuff. And she's seen me the very first wedding I we did. No one was listening. And I just went up and I grabbed the mic and I was like, yo, you guys need to chill for a second. We got a plan. We do it. And she's like, you do that all the time. And I was like, what had to be done? Like, I, I'm not going just to sit here. Right. I've had to do that so, a lot at weddings. Yeah. Like just my yeah. recent wedding I had to, like, there was a bunch of family like coming for like family pictures and the bride and the groom did not want all of yeah. everybody in yeah. their pictures. They wanted to have more time just for their pictures yeah. and no one was listening. They were getting real stressed <laughs> out. So I put my camera down and I was like, Hey, like everybody needs to go back to the reception for cocktail yeah. hour. We're going to do some pictures. I just need aunts and uncles. Will everybody <laughs> yeah. else leave. And like, they're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And I was like, you yeah. guys don't need to stress about it. Like, yeah. I'll take care of it. The best advice that I give my clients and any photographers that's looking to shoot weddings and stuff is let your client know that, and I tell this all the time, and I love it because it's very, it's a powerful thing, is that I don't have to see these people tomorrow. Yeah. They do. Right. So I can potentially say anything they want as long as it's okay with the couple right and i try to let them know i was like listen if you want me to be that person i have no problem at it right i don't care i'm here for you that's what i always tell my couples like i'm here you just tell me what you want me to do and i will do it some of them they let you loose and i'm just like i got you (laughs) and then you go into it i said i'm gonna go into director mode because i want to make sure that you guys are getting the shots you want and it's flowing and we're not like they said no q do it and i was like right you got it Mm -hmm. and then i'm I just go and I don't have that type of when you have that confidence from the people that you're shooting that tells like and because the thing is like I've shot a lot of weddings where there's not a coordinator there's not you yeah. know and the list goes if there's not a coordinator it's the photographer if there's not like a photographer and you're just doing video then it's the DJ if the DJ's not doing it it's you so it's just mm-hmm. like you kind of like you have to figure it out I mean the photographer is always the either first or second person in line yes. to grab that and people just like and then a lot of them just assume like they're just like oh what's happening next i was like i have no idea like what's what are you telling me (laughs) right i always try to get a timeline for my couples just so like i can coordinate things if like there isn't a coordinator there i always try to have them write me out like a timeline of like what they have had planned and like i'll always have like meetings with them and stuff just so i don't go in there and like everything is just like a mess like i need a schedule and know what i'm doing like for the day I like FaceTime my clients yeah. beforehand because one, you, when you kind of like, they kind of like, they're able to read you a little bit better. Mm-hmm. I um, usually go to a meeting. I usually yeah. like go and like buy my coffee. I usually will go yeah, to the Coal River I'm... Coffee Company. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I always yeah. go and I have meet my wedding clients there yeah. and I'll buy my coffee and we'll sit down and like go over like all the details and everything like yeah. that. So I can, we can meet each other, be more comfortable. We've seen each yeah. other and we can in person talk things out instead of just texting over the phone or something. Yeah. I be, I'll be honest. I think that's an amazing mm-hmm. uh, idea, but I don't think I'm I would ever do it. Yeah. So I think it's just me. Like, I I don't see myself meeting like that. And mm-hmm. so I think I'm more of a let's hop on Facetime. Yeah. Be, and Everybody so, has their own yeah, personal yeah. ways of doing yeah. things. Yeah. Cold that was on. We was talking about it last. Uh, he hopped in Discord. So there's um, we have a Discord and we have a Facebook group that's like filled with photographers and stuff as well are you in the discord yeah okay. oh, i don't think i have discord anymore but i yeah. am in the, okay. like, i don't yeah. have my app but I so am it's in the like discord. the way i explain it is the facebook group on steroids because yeah. there's so many channels and there's things going on and, and stuff you need to get it you need to get I back know. into it and stuff but we was hopping in there last night and what's really good is like you can hop right into a voice channel and you can share your screen and stuff and he was showing me like uh pixie set on how he like delivers to his clients and stuff mm-hmm. and he was like sharing the screen and we was talking about like you know how he was meeting his clients and he he does that too and i was mm-hmm. like dude that, i don't think i'll ever you know, yeah. do that but you know and but it's it's cool to hear other people's uh process on mm-hmm. things and um because in the end result is still an amazing like images and stuff. So, um, but yeah, so you, you shoot a lot of weddings, you do, um, portraits, engagements, mm-hmm. seniors and stuff. Um, you don't really touch, uh, like newborn photography right. very much at all. Um, like the most I'll get into yeah. that is like a lifestyle session in their home or something. I just like did that. one of those, yeah. yeah. And so the guy that I I knew I knew from college and stuff, and that was the only reason why I did it because I was just like, it's not gonna be weird. I'm right. in. Uh, I feel I just I just don't I don't know. 
it wasn't going to feel weird being in their like bedroom taking a photo of it. <laughs> yeah. and so, but it was like, if I didn't know them, I feel like that would be so weird. So it was no, just like. I have had like clients yeah. that were like new and I've had yeah. to, like go in their home. And I just try to like open it up, just be more yeah. of like personal myself, you know, because yeah. we're in their personal space, you know. True. Um, and I Lifestyle feel like that cool. really helps that yeah. like me just getting like on a more personal level with them so I can feel more comfortable. They feel more comfortable because they have pretty much a stranger in their home as well, you know. So I feel like that always helps a lot. So you, um, you've shot a lot, a lot of things in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you've learned through that and you're just like, oh, I got to get like, put something on my, like my bucket list shot, like whether it's a wedding or. I really just want to like do some like travel weddings, like go out of the country even. And like, I am like obsessed with Greece. I want to go there so bad. Like that's one of my top bucket list things is to get there eventually, which I don't mind if it's 10 years down the road. I just want to get there eventually. That's definitely one of my top bucket bucket list things is going to Greece, like for a wedding, like an elopement somewhere, like. Mine's Ireland. Ireland. I want to. I want to do so. Like, my last name's Murphy. Yeah. Like, obviously from the red hair and stuff. You know that. Like, that's like my heritage right. and stuff. <laughs> right. So, like, I want to photograph that for like internally. I want to like have a really cool connection mm-hmm. with like where I'm from and stuff. And so, like, and I did the like the 23 and Me. And like, my parents always told me they're like, no, yeah, like we're we're definitely. Like you're definitely Irish. And I was right. like, yeah, am I though? And then I was like, <laughs> and you just never know. But when you right. got like, you sent the DNA thing and you got your results back, it was like 69%. That's awesome. Like, yeah. and I'm just like, it even said there was like, there's people in Ireland that's living there. That's not even 69%. I'm just like, oh, what wow. the heck? That's crazy. I was like, so I was just like, I really want to go and shoot there. And I, it would be amazing to do like, you know, uh, like a Celtic type of wedding. Yes. On those cliffs. That would be beautiful. Uh, I really would. Yes. And I'll be in my element. I'll just be chilling out there and yeah. stuff. But I mean, um, so to so travel, I see, I, I've done, I've, I've shot in Hawaii and I've shot in Maine. That's as far as I've, that's the only travel ones I've really yeah. done. I don't count. Like if you go to like Kentucky or, right, or, or, or right across the Ohio, um, right. but um, I actually had traveled to Massachusetts. Okay. Not last year, the year before last. And um, that was probably the farthest that I've ever been. And yeah. it was, I drove. And it was probably like a 12 hour, 12 and a half hour drive there, a 12 and a half hour drive back. Oh my God. And it was a pretty long drive, but it really was a beautiful venue. It wasn't like, I don't feel like it was something like crazy to like travel out of state for, just where my clients with the, who were, that were from West Virginia, yeah. they end up like, they have a lot of family in Massachusetts. So they did their wedding there. And um, they just, hired me to come up there with them and it was really great but I would really just love to get out of the country and just really travel somewhere really pretty and do a lot of like elopements and weddings that's definitely one of like my top like bucket list yeah when I did the Hawaiian wedding it was it was more it was like a learning curve because I knew the couple and um it went well but it was just my it was one it was my first time flying so this is coming from little you know, a, a guy that's coming from Calhoun County, West Virginia, and that is now flying to Hawaii for a wedding. Right. And they booked me, and my wife was like, well, are you, you're not going without me. And I was <laughs> like, well, I didn't include that in the contract. You know, like, I don't know what to do. So we had, like, save money up for her ticket and stuff, and it was all a learning experience because, you know, I didn't make no profit off of it. But I was just more just excited for like right. I know I know what to do now, you know, right. and um, it was really cool. Um, I didn't take nearly as enough. I didn't like document as nearly as enough as I as I wanted to, because I think I was just like freaking out about airports and like what yeah. do I do? Like how do I do this and stuff? But then when I went to Maine this last um, summer, I went up there for an engagement session and. Um, I vlogged it and it was like my first like kind of like cool like travel like mm-hmm. I got my GoPro when the like we're like going off the, right. the and I was like oh I was like <laughs> I was like I look like an influencer now this is so <laughs> crazy and um I remember um I had like this little Airbnb like camper and I put the go like the camera and the GoPro up and then I turned the lights off and then you have to like film yourself coming in to make it look like you just arrived or whatever and I was like thinking I was like dude man everybody's doing like double the steps when you're looking at these like travel videos and stuff like people's like walking they have to 
go back and get the tripod. Right. And, right, yeah. and I was like, man, I was like, I'm already, I feel like I'm already lazy enough. I was like, I don't know if I want to <laughs> do that if we're just for the shot. So I learned a lot in just that little bit, but, um, that's like, you know, some of those B-roll shots that you get, like they, that makes or breaks like a video. Mm-hmm. And that's like uh, kind of go back into what you were saying about like the detail shots as well. It's like, you know, you could have some really, I would say like medium tiered photos, but if you have some really good like B-roll that goes into it, mm-hmm. your whole gallery just elevated. Right. Because now it's telling that story. And right, stuff. exactly. I feel like, yeah, because that's how I look at my galleries. It's more of like storytelling of like what we just did together, like yeah. what we just like experienced yeah. during our session than just like those pose shots. Yeah. Yeah, Cole uh, with New Creations Photography, mm-hmm. he was in the last episode. He just did an elopement at Audra and I told him, um, I was like, he did that perfectly. Like he did like these really cool like he documented and he's like that's the reason why i like elopement so much more because you're not working with like a hundred people you're working with right. like tops 10 right and i was like that's a very good point because you know you have more of that intimate like right. session with them mm-hmm. and there's so many people in the state um um leah stankus uh she does a lot of elopements out of buchanan and she's i mean her stuff is like I know. I, I do follow her on Instagram. Yeah. Her work is beautiful. I love her yeah. work. Yeah, she's always like, and she's going all over the place too right. and stuff. And she's killing it. She hosts workshops all the time, which mm-hmm. is really good up in that area. And, um, but like, that's that's the thing. Like, I'm hoping that I get, I mean, it'll, I'm not like, because there's some photographers that just does travel destination. And um, I would, like, I don't want to like dabble into it unless I'm, they come to me and right. I'm just like, okay, yeah. And then they're mm-hmm. like, have you been, I'm like, yep, I have, I have like that. And I have main, you know, and it was really cool. Cause when I was just doing that engagement session, I, they was like, yeah, we'll just fly you up. And I was like, oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Like that <laughs> sounds good Perfect. to me. Yeah. <laughs> and they was like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll buy your ticket and book your Airbnb and stuff. And you just come up. I was like, uh, I'll be on the next flight. Right. You know? no like it'd be great. And stuff. And I, I go back and tell my wife, and I said, I just booked an engagement session, but it's in Maine, and <laughs> I think I'm going in a couple of weeks and stuff. And she's like, what are you talking about? I was like, they booked me, but they don't want to come down here. They had family down here, but they just, they lived up in Maine. And I mm-hmm. was like, yeah, like I'm hopping on planes now, you know, That's for awesome, shoes. Yeah. And it, it was That's a, just a, such a big like step, like in your business. Yeah. Like, when you do get to like hop on a plane and go take pictures and someone yeah. wants you and like pays for you to get, come there to them, yeah. like. That's just such an amazing yeah. feeling, you know. And it wasn't really like my ticket was like three hundred, I think, for a round trip. Um, and I flew into Boston, then we uh, then we drove like twenty minutes up to Maine, and well, it was like twenty miles, but it was like forty minutes. It was just weird traffic. But anyway, yeah. um, what was really neat from it was that it didn't feel like it was. It felt like it was just an everyday thing. So it was yeah. like a little taste of what full time would mm-hmm. have been. And I was like, this is nice. Mm-hmm. I was like, I want to I want to start doing this and stuff. And then what was really cool, that was like, um, it was during my birthday too. So I woke up the next day in the Airbnb on my birthday. And then in the video, I was like, yeah, today's my birthday and I'm shooting photography. I was like, what <laughs> right. What better cool way to do it and stuff. And um, and then I hopped on the plane and you're just like coming. And you're, just, and you're the whole time you're thinking is just like, how much more of this can you like, this is just a little bit, but like, who knows? And, you know, you talked about going to Greece and Ireland. I was like, if that happens, like, I don't even have a passport. Right. So I'm just like, <laughs> oh, crap. We'll, like, to, like, well, you can get it like yeah. a passport. I'm, I don't know how long that takes. I think it takes about it's six like a couple months. weeks. Yeah. Is it a yeah. Couple weeks? Well, I think. I, I had know. to get a passport when I went. I went on a cruise for my 16th birthday, and yeah. we got it like six months beforehand. But I just I didn't know how long it actually took or not. Yeah, it's just I well probably in West Virginia, but like yeah. everything else <laughs> takes takes forever. But um, but that's the thing too is like there's little things you don't think about until you you're in in there. And I know when I was like I when I was flying for the first time, I was like I didn't know anything about like okay like what's check-in bag what's this what's that like my camera bag i packed it so tight yeah and i was like this is my carrying one i'm not because i was like i'm not putting that yeah i wouldn't either that would be my carrying you know? one as well i was like i'll be naked for like a whole week if they lose my clothes but like i'm n- i'm gonna have a camera with me you know like <laughs> right. and and th- they did they did not actually it was amazing like the we flew in and the airport was like i mean it was smaller than jaeger which is saying a lot but like right. 
it would look like a little tiki hut. You fly into it and you're just like, what the heck is going on? And then your bags are there. And I'm just like, the whole process was so weird to me because I'm just like, last time I saw that bag was in West Virginia. <laughs> and then you see it in Hawaii. You're just like, and we had three connecting flights. And it was a lot of firsts for me that, that um, um, on the way back, I was at like this little tiki hut drinking like Coronas and stuff. And my wife was out shopping. She's like, hey, I found a t- tattoo shop do you want to? And I was like, oh, I'm on my like six Corona. I was like, why not? So like <laughs> we go there and she's like, what are you going to get? I was like, I'm going to get a cheeseburger. So uh, I have a cheeseburger like literally right here about yeah. the size of my fist. And she was like, why, why are you doing that? I was like, we're it's cheeseburger in paradise. you know. <laughs> and I was like, I got to. Uh, and she's like, are you, how much have you drank? I was like, I've, I've had a couple of Corona's, but I don't know. <laughs> and she's like, are you sure? And I was like, I love cheeseburger. And so, <laughs> so it was a good like thing, but we had four hours of flight. Uh, he was in and out and I went in there and I asked the guy and he said, he's like, are you sure? He said, people usually get like sea turtles or something. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I can't swim. I would rather get a cheeseburger. And I so, can't swim. Let's give me a cheeseburger. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, I got to ask my boss because like, I want to make sure. And I was, he was, and then he came out, he's like, what do you want on it? And I was like, I want everything. Lettuce, tomato, <laughs> mayo. And stuff. And then I he got it there, and he was, and it looks, I love it. Like, it looks amazing, and people, I had it, I remember I was sitting on the plane on the way back, and I had, like, these shorts on, and my wife kept on getting mad at me, because it was the first one, but you want to, like, you want to kind of, like, show it off. Right. You're like, you're like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a badass, or whatever. So I had my, <laughs> it was like, my shorts was way too high than it needed yeah. to be and stuff. And she's like, pull your shorts down. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> and apparently she, she said, she took a picture of me when I didn't even know it. And my legs was all out. And she's like, your legs are all out in the aisle. You, you need to reel it in right now. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I just want to show people my tattoo, you know, but it was so much fun. And, but that was, it was cool. And I just know that, you know, when I look at that, I'm just be like, yeah, that was a good vibe. It was right. a good opportunity. And I would have never gotten those experiences if it wasn't for, you know, photography and right. in the long run. And I was going to do, um, when I was going to go up to Maine and everything, I was going to get a uh, moose on a surfboard. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I ended up didn't get that and stuff, but I'm I'm all about it now. I feel I'm just like, like those like, tattoos tell more stories. I just yeah. really love tattoos like that. Too. Yeah, I'm I don't ready. have like any like weird or like crazy yeah. tattoos like that, but I always like love hearing the stories behind them. That's the same same thing as like a process, and people's just like with my photography. Like you look at some of them, and people's like, "Oh, that's really great." I'm like, "Yeah, I shot her." literally in front of a porta potty right and, and people like, you like, even know some places that you yeah, take pictures and like yeah. how the end product actually yeah. looks like i'll have clients sometimes like going out to like questionable places and they're like oh like you can tell like yeah. they're kind of like weary about how this is going to yeah. turn out i'm like just trust me i yeah. promise it's going to look great and then they absolutely love their pictures and like yeah so just like some pla- you just have to work with it and it looks awesome yeah. i always tell people it's like you have faith in me and they're like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i was like good just smile and I'll handle the rest right. and stuff. And then that kind of like lets them know and stuff. And I mean, but, um, that's the, that's the cool part, you know, like when you tell people that the whole process of things and stuff, and then you're like, you see it click and they're like, Oh wow. Like you don't have to have an expensive setup. You don't have to have a crazy backdrop or anything like that. You can yeah. like, I did one portrait. It was a poster literally tacked on a, on a barn and it looked like this pink backdrop. Like if, like if she was in like LA or something, you yeah, know, that's and awesome it's a pink poster board and I've shot stuff with confetti. I love smoke and water and everything. Cause you can't like, you can't, you can get inspired by it, mm-hmm. but you may not be able to get the same shot and right. stuff. And, um, I like motion. I like doing things like that. I love golden hour. And, but it's, it's just, it's just neat. That process, that point when you, when, whether you're editing, whether you're doing anything like that and it clicks, that's the part of like growth that you see. And you're just like, yes right yeah and stuff so um so yeah is there any like other photographers that you follow or that you want to like shout out and stuff or yeah like we were talking about earlier i absolutely love like sincerely stacy stacy's work yep. she has been one of like my inspirations as a photographer like since i started so much like i absolutely love her work like we talked about like the attention of detail and create and creativeness that she has is just crazy and beautiful i love it 
Um, I also love Caitlin Christian Photo. I love working with her. She is such an amazing photographer. She is so sweet, and she is the biggest hype woman. She will hype you up the whole time. Like, love her so much. She Um, she sent me a TikTok this morning, (laughs) so she tagged it. Uh, Actually, it was, who was it? I think it was her. Yeah, it was her, and there was, uh, it was talking about, it was uh, Regina George's, like, voiceover about, um, oh, shoot, hold on. I gotta, like, I gotta find it. I'm gonna butcher trying to explain (laughs) that. I think it was her. It might have been Haley that did it, too, but it was talking about being a male photographer, and the voiceover was, like, Regina George, and it was, what, no, it it was actually Haley, but when you actually... I actually say I hate male photographers in front of you and stuff. Regina, please. Regina, stop. No, this isn't about you. You're speaking with your home school jungle freak who's a less hot version of me. <laughs> so, That's like, uh, Haley and, and Kristen that you said, and then uh, there was those, there was, well, it might have been you. So I've been talking to so many people in the last, like, week and stuff, but, like, yeah, now they're starting to tag me and stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah that, that's that's hilarious and stuff." But sorry, I didn't mean to no, cut you no, off. No, you're fine. That. You're fine. Um, no, and like how we talked about earlier as well, um, Liza Whittington. Like I yeah. absolutely love her work, and she is so sweet. Like she was one of the first photographers who ever came to me, and like I didn't ask for any help. Like she offered it. Like she knew I kind of like needed a little bit. Like I was just starting, and she was so helpful. Like I really like I can't recommend her enough to anybody who would ever want to like be interested in getting pictures done from her because she is so amazing um there are so many other photographers I don't really I haven't like really talked to like personally but I follow and like Mm -hmm. I love their work so much like um Heather Christine photo I love her work Uh, she kills it she She runs a full team and just like she is so amazing like she's traveling everywhere like her work is I want her on the pod just for she'd just be a really great business side of things and just like but i'm afraid if i reach out to her she's gonna be like she's gonna she's gonna be booked up because she's like <laughs> right. always booked like, I know. she's always she's always telling us she's she's hyped me up a lot in the discord and stuff um and um she she told me the other day she's like who is i'll fight him and i was like i, I like <laughs> i like that attitude and stuff yeah. i was like but um no she kills it she really does she, her style shoots is just I mean, knocks it out of the park. Yes. I mean, they're so good. She always has beautiful models, the attention mm-hmm. to detail. She's She just got back from, she did one in Hawaii. Yeah. That was just crazy. Like, I want to do one so bad. I'm, I want to I wanna do one of those style shoots. Like, I want to go like Joshua Tree or somewhere. Yes, like I would, that would be like, awesome to go there. Like, out to the desert. Yeah, I've been obsessed with like Nashville Western Taylor Swift, I don't know what you want to call <laughs> yeah. it right now, but like um, I've been obsessed with it, and it's like trending right now. A lot of people right. is doing it. Um, Aaliyah Stahl up at um, Stahl Family Photography. She's up in Morgantown. She's been killing it with the Western like boutiques and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just recently met with her. Well, not well, met her on Discord, and um, she's shooting like so many of these awesome western shots and we're trying to collab uh, this summer we want to do some really cool things and stuff that'd be um, awesome but yeah well uh caitlin it has been awesome talking to you for the first time just yeah. sitting down and just talking photography and um as always guys all of her links will be located in the description below this podcast is sponsored by megan nicole photography so um her links would be in the description this whole studio is available to rent whether you're doing mommy and me's you're doing boudoir you're doing regular portraits it's available whenever you just gotta go onto her website and book a session and all the information is going to be located in the description below if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts at Pool Focus. And we'll see you in the next one. Stay safe and never stop creating. <laughs>